Hi, I'm Mac Brown, rector of St. James Episcopal Church here in Taos, New Mexico. We're so honored and glad that you're joining us with us in worship. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for the gift and blessing of life, and for your call to be your people in this place. We ask that you continue to pour out your grace upon us so that we may see you in all that you have redeemed and that we may gather those who sit in the shadow of darkness so that they may know that they come within your saving embrace. All this we ask in the name of the one who loved first, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, it's Sunday. I mean, like, there's nothing else. It's it's Sunday. It's ordinary Sunday. It's not Easter tide. It's not Lent. It's not Good Friday or Christmas. It's Sunday. And we've passed through those liturgical seasons where, where we had something kind of to do, right? Always focusing on something. But now we've gone through the Feast of Pentecost. We've gone through that doctrinal Sunday of Trinity Sunday, and we are squarely, squarely in ordinary time. Some people call it the season of Pentecost. I like to call it ordinary time because, my friends, the reality is it's extraordinary. Now, I have to tell you I have a bit of an affinity for that word, extraordinary. If we say it quickly, as I am off to speak too quickly, extraordinary. And, of course, it just becomes like our mountains, extraordinary, like our sunsets, like the gorge, things that are grandiose things that we marvel and awe at, extraordinary. But if we say it slowly, if we look at the word, things are extraordinary. Extraordinary. The regularness of things, the extraness of regularness becomes extraordinary. I think there's a deep theological truth in that. We'll get to there. We'll get to that. I want us to talk a bit about our readings, of course. We have our reading from Paul that is so familiar. Now, it, you know that Paul writes letters, and he writes letters to churches that he helped found, and he's, he's, he's walking them through the maturation. But this letter to the Romans is very different. Paul's never met them. It's a cold call. That's right. St. Paul had to make cold calls. So take heart. And so we get in this letter of the Romans, it's obviously the longest, long explanations of the faith. And here we get, we are justified by faith. Man, thanks be to God. I mean, that's the story we hear from Abram and Sarah, that it is in their grace and their faith that they are justified and blessed, that that has been the truth from the beginning. And it's been called out to us even more in the gift of Christ that in this gift, we are justified, we are redeemed, we are sanctified. Like, that through our faith, we receive the gifts that God has promised. Mm. So take heart, my friends. Because we are not able to do the things that we were usually did, that we're not able to make the mass and be present in the ways we are, that we are, by faith, who we are. And that this time is a time that God is calling us to find something new, as God is always calling us to find new life. And so I turn to the gospel reading, where we hear the story of Jesus sending out the apostles. Again, I, I want you to know apostle is a word that means directly a person sent by God. And the reality is, yes, we have this story of the sending out of these, but that's the work that God has been doing with us all the time that you and I are part of that apostolic succession, that you and I have been sent by God to do the work God has given us to do. That mysterious work where we labor not knowing that we are necessarily doing that work, but in our faith, reaching out in our faith, we're able to do that work. And, and I want you to see the, the parallels between Jesus's work of curing the sick healing the wounded, reuniting what had been divided is the exact work that God gives to the apostles. That's right, that God gives to you and I to heal the sick, to, he, to, to cure the sick, to heal the wounded 
and to reunite what was divided. I know that's heavy. <laughs> I'm wearing a collar. I know how heavy it is. But that's the call that we have accepted. That's the commission we have been given. And again, even though that work looks different this day, these days, that work is still there for us to do. And, and there's another great mystery that I want to point out in this sending out. And it's because we know the end of the story that we've walked through Monday, Thursday. And we know that all are gathered there at that table, and then one of them leaves to betray him, the zealot. But I want to remind you that Judas is in this story, that Judas is one of the ones sent by God, and that the work that Judas does, as heinous and ununderstandable as it is, still is the work that leads to the glory of God. In this story that we hear today, we also have Peter. And of course, Peter, the rock, the one who first claims you are the Christ, the anointed one, is also the first one to deny him. Three times to say, that's not me. I don't know him. I'm not connected. And so I want us to wrestle with the reality that the same people who are sent are the same people who don't get it right all the time, but yet are the same actions that lead to the unfolding of the kingdom of God. My friends, we're not in control. We are participants in this extraordinary life where God is unfolding God's kingdom, where the garden is being repopulated by the creatures that love and are loved by God. And we are agents of that grace. We are here to remind people that in the ordinariness, in the bees and the flowers, we can see the grace of God. That none of us, none of us are outside that loving embrace of God. And that all of us, all of us are imbued by our creator with the gift of that divine spark. And that that, my friends, is the most ordinary thing about us all. And all of our uniqueness and all of our spiciness and flavorfulness that we each have, we all are just ordinary, loved creatures of God who've had our own individual walks and journeys through this life, through this extra, extraordinary life, to be a beacon and light of the facet of God that we are. I hope you heard that horse neigh. I feel like he was agreeing with me. But here we are. Here we are called to be in the ordinary, knowing that it's extraordinary. Here we are called to be people, knowing that we are extraordinary and are ordinary. Here we are. Here we are called to be, called to be, to love as we are loved, and to be God's people. My friends, I hope that these ordinary days, you are able to revel in the extraordinary, to find the grace of clean running water as you wash your hands, to find the joy of a simple laugh or smile, to find the peace of solitude and quiet, and to know that you are surrounded by God and God's saving embrace. I miss you. I long for us to be back in our ordinary ways, but I know that God is calling us to new and extraordinary, ordinary life. Keep the prayers, keep the faith, keep the love. In the name of the one who loved first, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.